I am not uh, a mycologist, although when I was young down here, my um, Slovak second cousins would come and we would they would do mushroom picking in the local forest preserves. And uh, they obviously knew because they're still alive. <laughs> and um, but I try taking I love them and I take pictures of them wherever I go. So okay. wow. yeah, no, that works. It. So this is an unknown, but I feel like someone in the group will know it. If you want to unmute yourselves, we or put it in the chat. This one's gonna be an easy one. Yeah, uh -huh. hold off a little bit. I will. Okay, bring it back. <laughs> but we can think about what we're seeing. These are um, all unknowns for you, Doctor Zaber. Is that right? Yeah, uh, I. You know, um, I'm a systems ecologist, so I and a toxicologist. I can tell you what will kill them, <laughs> but I can't tell you what species they are. All I know is I like them, even if they're pathogenic. Cool. Same here. Um. I'll just throw this one out here. That's an oyster mushroom of a, a variety. Maybe someone's got some species guest. Uh, these are edible. Um, usually very okay. good edible. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and not um, pathogenic either. These are saprotrophic. Which and would they would be not toxic then? Sap yeah, they're, they're not only not toxic, but so like pathogens would be actively killing your tree. A, mm -hmm. a a uh, sap probe would be deca eating decaying matter. So like a part of the tree that's already dead. Now it might be kind of a symptom of an ailing tree if it's appearing on a still living tree because it's like, okay, part of the tree is dead. Okay. But okay. it's it's more of like a symptom of something else that's killed the tree or is killing the tree. Not, yeah, it's not going to be- What would chaga be considered? Is chaga a mushroom? Because uh, I use a chaga tea and drink that. So I'm going to let Tavis answer that one. So the chaga that you're drinking is actually the sclerotium from a parasitic mushroom, a mushroom rarely seen. It's just the energy cell from that fruiting body. Hmm. Your mushroom here, honestly, and, and somebody can argue with if they want, it might be Pleurotus pulmonarius, but it's growing on elm, which really points towards Pleurotus citrinopileatus that's been faded I'm out. I was thinking citrinopileatus. Oh, yeah. yeah. And mostly just because um, citrinopileatus like really grows in, in kind of like a cluster sometimes instead of like individually. And it really looks like that's there's a base and it's like kind of sharing a base in some of these areas. And then also it's got that dimple in the middle and the yellow color, but it's faded, but it looks like it was probably like a golden yellow at one point. Let's see if I've got another. Oh, there's a different one. Do you guys see that? We see it. I uh not I a great picture. These. I thought it was like a turkey tail or something like that. So this is a good one for people starting out to learn. Um, is that the first thing you do to tell if something's a turkey tail or not is to flip it over. And you've definitely like flipped this log over. Um, like this lob is, how log has been flipped. You can tell because you can see the underside of some of them. And then the other, some of them you can see the top. And so like at one point they were growing out in one direction, the log flips, then they grow out in kind of the other orientation. And the ones that are all like brown there, see how it kind of looks like shag carpet? Those are old teeth or mycological teeth. They're, I say old because they shouldn't be brown when they were fresh. They were probably purple. Um, mm. And so these are old violet tooth polypore or okay. trichaptum species. All right. All right. I yeah, think turkey you're... tail would have teeny little pores. Like okay. small, like... Oops, sorry. Oh, no problem. Um, Tavis, did you me... have anything to say about... Just real quick about trichaptum. Yeah, yeah, they're still pores. They just have a jagged edge. It, this is a polypore. It's not a toothed mushroom. So this is trichaptum abiotinum. I, I would I would say You're that could say be that the conifer. a hardwood log. It looked coniferous to me. It looked like spruce. I could be way off on that. It could be cherry or something. That's a good uh, but point. But it looks like spruce. Toothed is kind of like all of these things, whether they're teeth or pores or gills or fake gills, they're all just the surface that the mushroom is producing its spores um, on and but releasing teeth, them from. Teeth, as as definition, teeth are always conical. Okay. 
And meanwhile, like a like the violet toothed polypore, it's like their pores that became so jagged they are toothed. They're irregular shaped. Yeah. With what a wonderful word edge. Yeah. Of mycology terms. Hmm. Did you have any other ones to ID? I do. I'm gonna I'm trying to pull those up. up here. And let's um see if I can. How about this one? Oh, I know that one. Anyone else, if you want to unmute and say okay. common names accepted. Is it a northern tooth? Yes, it is. We'll northern poly tooth polypore. And I'm actually going to say somebody else say the um, clim is it climactodon. Climacodon. Climacodon. It is a gorgeous mushroom, not edible. And you would, mm. if you kind of cut at it, you would kind of immediately kind of see why it's very tough, even when fresh, I would say. I'm going to okay. question that ID completely since it's growing on a red pine. Oh, and it's really? standing on the edges. Okay. What might, what else might it be? Uh, we might want to look at uh, Teferluca. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to. Pull it up on iNaturalist. I thought it was a beautiful mushroom. Epithet. It was really a cool mushroom. Or it is it is very beautiful. Fungus. Unless you think that's a silver maple, which it could be. No, I think that was... God, now, it wouldn't have been a silver. Um, I think that's a... The red pine, uh, like you, the bark is, uh, it depends on where that is, but I'm that that pat that you know, platey bark, the small plates, and um, I don't think it's a silver maple up there. Okay, it looks red pine to me, except for that vertical frost crack, which would be typical of maple here. So, mm -hmm. I would yeah. say that if it's silver maple, then it is climacodon. And if it's red pine, then it's certainly not. Would it, and this would not be a sugar maple. Yeah, just, I don't no, no, remember no. it being no, a silver. Uh, silver maple. Yeah, I don't remember it being a silver. All right. Okay, uh, but, if I might, I might oof. share my screen now and I'll show, um, oh, hold on, let me make sure that. The window is available to share too. I have like the iNaturalist um, page up for Climacodon, and then we could look at the other one that Tavis was suggesting it is. Okay. Then this would be up in the, you know, um, north of Eagle River in that neck of the woods, so. I believe. Wow. This is so. This was the one, the first species suggested that now we're kind of putting into doubt. You can see why we would say it. It's the shape. It's you know a lot of the habit. Um, that it's on the time frame is right. The time frame is right. Yeah, this is a nice little graph. And if you want, you can always filter by place. And I have this as my quick link to Wisconsin, and so I can quickly see like, oh, just in Wisconsin, this is this. And then you have to remember to take it off. Mm. So if we look at the map. We can see that this would be correct for the territory. And if, yeah, okay. Um, mm -hmm. And then we can also, so the other useful thing is similar species. Now this is, you know, like it gives you what other people may have, you know, mistaken it for commonly on iNaturalist. Like, uh, however, I didn't see the one that Tavis mentioned, but that could easily be, be because A, the name has changed, or B, not that many people maybe know about it or have corrected observations into it. So Tavis, if you could spell for me the name of what you were suggesting. Northern tooth. Interesting. Tavis, did you unmute yourself? Yeah, I'm sorry. It's Postia tephraluca, P-O-S-T-I-A-T-E-P-H-R-O-L-E-U-C-A. -E -E okay. Go again with that. I'm basing that on the, the discoloration oh, of the it. edge. Also, one thing that you're you're forgetting to look up is the range of silver maple. Oh, it might look okay. You're way outside the range of silver maple. 
what where he was saying i guess i'm not familiar with where that is um it would be up on the border of michigan and wisconsin okay yeah silver maple is limited to the southern one third of the state Let's... yeah and and it's it's just it's down here that's I why mean... i thought sugar maple but Let's see. Okay, so the, some of these may be inaccurate observations, and certainly when we kind of—oh my God, sorry, I'm zooming a little too fast. Certainly, Tavis, you're definitely right that like the big cluster is down here, and then we probably some things in communities are tree plantings, you know. Well, and they're it just as an ornamental, widespread. Yeah, people uh, plant them for quick in a forest planting. setting. You just, you just won't. Sure. So yeah. he was in a forest setting as opposed to if you were to observe it like somebody's front yard. Well, in any case, I think that's a good observation. I mean, we can definitely see you're right that like look at all the blank space. And oh, way, no. way more likely to have the big red pine of that size where I was. Right. So now I'm going to go have us look at this other suggestion Tavis had. So the Postia tefoleukia. I was not familiar with the species. Apparently a common name is grayling bracket. So if we look at the map for that one, it really may be kind of much more sparse than it really is because I'm guessing this is one that not that many people know about and are correctly identifying. So there's like one observation in Wisconsin. Um, we can look at the images. One thing I'm gonna kind of question you on Tavis is why would you expect it to have the growth habit of like, that's more like Climacodon because it seems. Uh, I'm like... basing that on the color change on the edge. Okay. Okay, so you're thinking that maybe. Uh, could... That one is misidentified for sure. The one you were Which just. One? This up. one. Uh, the one that has has the sleeve coming down. That's that's certainly not Postia. Interesting. Okay, so we can view that observation. And yeah, these are all in progress things. This one, in fact, is not confirmed by a second person, so it's just what this one person suggested for it um so do we have another suggestion for what it maybe is uh what did postia livens get moved into gonna have to admit live that i don't know but we'll look it up it might come up if i search it, it moved into cyanoporous livens is that one of the cheese polypores? Yeah, that's the blue cheese. Right? Uh, no. Well, you can call it that. That's Tyromyces is the cheese polypores. Okay. But... I can call it the uh, blue cheese, though, if I want, or the other. Blue I may cheese. have another picture of it that gives us a little better. Um, Hold on a second here, if you guys are ready. For sure. Hold on. I'll stop sharing. Also, I might hold off yeah. on suggesting anything. Um. For that one, because I think it, I don't know what AT means, but I think it might be well out of our range. Oh, so I see the darkening on the edges there. I just still. And kind of that think looks more mapley to me. That it does to me as well. Like that doesn't look like a conifer to That's me. That's silver no. maple. Well, That's okay. silver. a very scaly red maple, but those are going to be the two hosts. So That's we can go back to this is Climacodon. Yeah. And and red maple would be more likely, I believe, where I was. But hundred percent, silver maple won't just won't grow there. Red maple will just, and it wasn't wet enough. It was, silver maple's down here in these wetlands and swamps, and it's just very everywhere they split. It's just it's not silver maple, huh? So that was another picture of it there. Okay, let me check my notes on discoloration there. There could be another climacodon too. Cool, we were partly stumped here. That was a good one. Goes to show you how many, you know, how useful second pictures are. Multiple mm -hmm. pictures when we're identifying mushrooms. Really is for sure. Um, let's see here if I had another. I have a bunch, several of them in the talk, and and any during it, you know, I want people to say things, and it, you know, it's be the best way to do it because I have no idea about some of these mushrooms. I guess yeah, the I easiest way would have been to look up close because, well, Climacodon all has teeth. They're not a polypore. True. They were uh, forming the hiddenaceae with hiddenum and, and hiddenellum. 
which Sarcodon. is really funny. And they have they have real teeth, is what you're saying, like the conical shape thing. Conical not just teeth that got it's like stalactites. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, I should but, take a picture from the bottom. Yeah, or very up close. Sometimes um, people they're very fine teeth. teeth. Yeah, sometimes they're not I see, the, the distinct teeth of hidden them. I see people kind of take for a poly for something that looks like a polypore but may not be. I see people take their knife and kind of just cut an, a slight section through the just the edge of it and take a picture of kind of that cross section, and it can really quickly kind of help you get a look at what the shape of that pore forming surface is. Okay. Um, so we're looking at another one here. A lot of these. This was a two there. There's two species. Two species. I think there was a sugar. This was a sugar maple. You got Wait. Philinus or Fomatopsis, wherever it's at now. Probably Fomatopsis, Mountier. And then this one up here honestly looks more seriporous to me. Really? I, yeah, it okay. Look like it looks doesn't look like it's rotting. It doesn't look like a perennial. It looks like an annual. The one up top, maybe. It right. The bottom so one's to gonna be Fomatopsis Maltier or something similar there. Yeah. The one up top though, I could totally see it being a very old of the same thing, like extremely old. You'd have to kind of touch it to to see if it's like more woody and hard or Sure, sure. And my screen, I've got them. There's these pictures are the size of a dime. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. No, and it might be Tavis's screen, honestly. It's me, hundred percent. Yeah. It's, okay. That's what I have here. They and were so hard. They were hard. It was in Sylvania wilderness. Oh. So right by Land of Lakes. Yeah. I'm gonna say that the ones in the back are definitely not um like the older ones they're not gonna be uh the pheasant back um like tavis was bringing up not i i think that if tavis could see this picture for sc full scale he would agree because you can see the underneath is attaching like a bracket it's okay, not okay i can, I can kind of see that back. but am i seeing something decaying here or am i wrong no you're totally right that the the ones in the back were certainly an older fruiting um yeah, they, but they're they definitely like a woody bracket Probably right, and Fomatopsis won't decay like that unless it's 10 years old, maybe then. I think it could be. So we would suggest something in Fomatopsis, but not Betulina, obviously. We use a Fomatopsis mucinae. Uh, yeah, yeah, or Igniarius, somewhere somewhere in there. Not Igniarius, uh, Mountier. Mountier okay. is going to be your, your hit on maple. Yeah, we can it's see on, maple leaves in the background. It's on a sh old sugar maple, S dead one, I believe. Yeah, or yeah. Hmm. All right. Uh, let me grab. So Oops, that would sorry. be a common name for Fomatopsis. Um, Mosinae is northern red belt, and it. I don't see the red belt there, but would we say that sometimes it doesn't have the red color? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Sometimes it doesn't. Okay. Well, right off the bat, we can recognize that one. If anyone wants to unmute themselves and give a give us the ID. Not. Boogie. I know what you mean, but please repeat it. I think you. A sugi? Sugi. Yeah. Okay. Um, I heard like poogie. But no, this is a sugi or pronounced perhaps suge is how I learned it. But, you know, amanita, amanita. Um, so suge. Uh, and then that's the, the Ganoderma suge. I was like trying to flip it around in my head. So the suge is like the species epithet or the species name. And the, the genus is Ganoderma. Okay. And does anybody know like a common name for this one? It's a common medicinal. This is, oh, this is the, the rishi. This is rishi. Yeah. That's rishi. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. This is the rishi species that grows in Wisconsin. It's different from the rishi that you would find in Asia or mm. in um, out west of, of, of 
North America, um, but they're all kind of in, in Ganoderma and they all, all the one, there's a group of them then that kind of look like this. Because if you look up like Ganoderma lucidum, it looks quite a lot like this too. Um, but this is Ganoderma suge and continuing the pop, the theme of pop quiz, what does, is, what tree is suge the uh, genus of? Hemlock. hemlock. Yep. Well, the genus of hemlock it's is Suga. Suga. All Suga. right. All right. Fair Suga enough. Suga canadensis. But you're good. That's a good one. Yeah. And so the this grows on hemlock. It's just such a beautiful contrast to that moss. I was just, when I walked by it, I'm like, good Lord, that is fantastic. Their mm -hmm. stunners, when they are younger and like, uh, man, even in like late June, July, They've got this beautiful gradient from like that lacquer red to yellow to white. It's just really stunning to see that gradient. So that's a good time to find them. It's um, there. I could. There's a dry one. And it's in the presentation. I always call them the Rastafarian mushroom because they kind of dry out to black and yellow and a little red lines. It's they're fantastic. Uh, Tavis is holding up one there. Oh, yeah. It's a little backlit, so it's kind of silhouetted, Tavis, but you can see it pretty good still. Oh, I don't have a front light. I'm not finding where Tavis is, probably because... Um, He's muted. Yeah, but... I also oh, don't yeah, there we go. pin Tavis, somebody. If I you can... unmute and say something, now your hands are already full, then you'll... I'm going to pin the video. There we go. Okay. Go. All right. Showing off the Ganoderma suge. Nice. Yeah. Uh, no. I'll unpin Tavis. Um, so that's that's uh, one that people harvest when it is like fresh. Like if you harvested it when there was a bunch of bugs going through it, can't use that. What are those called? The pleasing beetles that they live off of basically these kinds of polypores almost exclusively, if I'm not mistaken. So part of the ecology of that mushrooms, they get around by these beetles spreading spores. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So are we at about, um, can't see the clock. Okay, we are coming up on 7 p.m. And that is when Dr. Zaber is going to be uh, talking to us, like giving his actual presentation. This is kind of our warm up look at mushrooms section. And I'm going to leave it to Brennan to introduce Dr. Zaber if 